Now, I know that you guys do not like these types of questions. Hey, I remember as a student and I've been teaching for long enough, I know that students just don't like these questions and I don't blame you. They're super weird. It's like, what does this even mean? Um, can't they just say it in a better way? I know it's weird. Okay, so last question of the evening. Let's do it, guys. So remember that it only asks us, it only gives us um, two marks. So these are going to be fairly quick, fairly easy. It says use the graph to determine the values where the graphs are equal. Now, some of you, you might look at these equations up at the top and you're like, oh, I know what to do. I'm just going to make them equal to each other. There's nothing wrong with that. But it is only for two marks. And they said, use the graph. So we can see that these two graphs are intersecting each other over here at four. It even tells us the graphs intersect at there and there. And then the other intersection point is over there. Okay. And so, um, and so if we were to go and do this, we could just say that X is equal to um, four or X equals to negative two. That's an easy one. Hey guys, that's a nice easy one. All right. So here's our next question. Um, now here's where it gets a little bit strange. It says f of x, but I'm going to try make, I'm going to give you guys a nice little technique that might help. So f of x divided by g of x, um, when you divide them, you must get a positive number. Now, let me explain what you mustn't do. Please don't go plug the equations in over here. It's just going to be weird. Um, I mean, it might work out nicely, but for the most part, it's just going to be strange. Okay, so what you're going to do instead, guys, is the following. If we think about basic maths, like from grade six, even, if you want to take two numbers and divide them, how can you divide them and still end up with something that is bigger than zero? So how can you end up with something that is positive? You either need the following. You need them both to be positive because then, um, then this will be positive, okay? Or they can both be negative. That also works because if they are both negative, then um, if you divide two negatives, it will still give you a positive, right? So that's how you need to understand these questions. Um, if you have a negative, if you have a positive number divided by a positive number, that'll give you a positive. And if you have a negative number divided by a negative number, that is also positive. Okay, so okay, so what happens now is that what we are going to now go and do, guys, is we are going to go and look on the graph. And let's focus our attention for now on this one over here. So we're going to go look where the graphs are both positive. So what do they mean? Where are the Y values both positive? So let's start with graph F. Where is graph F positive? Well, graph F is positive over here. Right? That is where graph F is positive. Now, we need to go and see where is graph F, I mean, where is graph G positive? So let's have a look. Um, where is graph G positive? Let's use a different color. So graph G is positive over here. All right. So, so now can you see where are, where are both graphs going to be positive? Well, that would be that would be from here, from here, all the way up to here. Because if you go past, then this graph is going to become negative. That graph will become negative. So that answer is going to be, the x value is going to be um, between the minus 2 and the 6. So let's quickly write that answer. We can say that x must be bigger than minus 2 and smaller than or equal to six. Now, some of you are like, Kevin, 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 just whoa, 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 whoa. Why is the minus two not included, but the six is included? Right. Now, the reason is this, guys. When you look at the denominator here, 
a denominator is not allowed to be negative. I mean, Kevin, a denominator is not allowed to be zero because that is called undefined. So if you look at the minus two, the minus two, at that point over there, both graphs are equal to zero, their y values. So if I had to choose that point minus two, then this graph here is zero. And that is why I was not able to include the minus two. However, I can include the six because that's part of F. That's part of graph F. And that is allowed to be zero. There's nothing wrong with having a zero at the top, but you don't want to have a zero at the bottom. Some of you want set builder notation. So if we had to use set builder notation, that's going to go like this. X is an element going from minus two up to positive six, where the positive six is included. Okay, guys, so all that we've done now is we've looked at the scenario where both of the graphs are positive. But now we also need to go and look where are both of the graphs negative, because we said that that is also an area that we need to look at. Okay, so we've done this part. Now we are going to go see where are both graphs negative. All right. So let's quickly um, erase all of that. And let's start over. So let's see now, where is graph F negative? Graph F is negative here and over here. Now let's use a different color, green. Where is graph G negative? Here. Aha. So is there a place on the diagram where both graphs are negative? Yes, there is. It's this area over here. So for that part, I'm going to switch my video off quickly. For that part, we could say it is when x is smaller than negative 2. For those of you that like to use interval notation, you could say x is an element um, from minus infinity up to negative 2. So guys, um, you can leave your answer. You can leave your answer as... Um, these two over here. So you could say um, final answer, final answer. And you could say that X is bigger than minus two and smaller than or equal to six, or um, X must be smaller than negative two. It says this thing multiplied by this thing must be a positive number. That is how I look at it first. I don't care about this is the first derivative, blah, 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 blah. We'll get to that just now. Um, what I like to just realize is that I know, because I'm super smart from grade six, that when I multiply two numbers together and I want to get a positive, all I need to have is that both of them must be positive or both of them must be negative. And I am going to go look on my graph where I can find out where those things are happening. So I'm either going to have both of them being positive, or I'm going to look where both of them are negative. I will start by looking at the top one. I'll look and see where are they both positive. Okay. But now we need to talk about something. What does this even mean? No, it is not the inverse. A lot of students think that that's the inverse. Um, the inverse is um, the inverse is when they use a minus one like that. Okay, but um, yeah, that's when they use a minus one. But when they use a line like that, it means the first derivative, and it actually just means the gradient. It means the gradient of a line. Okay. So I need to go and look at the graph of F and I need to see where is its gradient positive. So if I go look at the graph of F now, let me get us a highlighter. The graph of F has a positive gradient over here. See, it's got a positive gradient up to there. That is where it has a positive gradient. What I'm now going to go and do is I'm going to go and see where is the graph of G positive. They're not talking about its gradient. They're not doing that. Um, they are just wanting to know where is its graph positive. So that would be, I'm just getting my highlighter. Okay, so where would the graph of F be positive? The graph of F would be positive um, over, I mean the graph of G, sorry, it would be positive over here. Okay, 
So then where are both of them positive? Well, if I had to go and isolate this little area here, there, can you see that for those, between those X values, um, that is where the, the both graphs, the one graph has a positive gradient and the other graph is positive. The problem is though, is that we don't know exactly what this X value is over here. Yes, it probably is a two, but we need to double check. So we need to know what this X value is. Okay, so to do that, we know that we can just, you can either use calculus um, or you can just realize that this is a parabola and we can just use, we can go old school. We can go grade 11 turning point formula if you wanted to, and you can work out the X value of that turning point. And so that's going to be negative two over, um, I'm just using this formula here, over two times negative a half. And that's going to give us an X value of two. So the X value over here is two. Right. So where would the answer be? It would be between minus two and positive two. So I can say um, X is bigger than or equal to negative two and smaller than or equal to positive two. Now I can include both of them because they said I can include both of them and there's no fraction. So I don't have to worry about dividing by zero or anything like that. For those of you that prefer interval notation, you would just say minus two up to two like that. Okay, now guys, I need to go and examine, last part of, um, of this lesson, I need to go and examine this part over here where we have um, two negatives. So I need to go see on my graph now, where is, um, where is the graph of F, where is its gradient negative? Okay, so let me just quickly erase everything here. So the graph of F has a negative gradient over here. That's when its gradient is negative. Now in that same little, oh, sorry. Now I need to go find the area where the graph of G is uh, negative. And so that would be here. Now, all of a sudden, I hope that most of you can realize that there is no answer there. There is no answer for that part at all because, um, yeah, they, 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 can you see that there's no, there's no overlap between those two sections? And so the only answer for this question 5.3 is this over here.